a neighborhood diorama appears beneath a painted blue sky hung with cotton ball clouds. Cardboard moving boxes and a TV sit piled in front of a blue house. A moving truck with a lowered ramp is parked on the street nearby. We hear reports of violence in our communities and in the world almost daily. From breaking news stories to social media feeds or incidents that occur in our own neighborhoods. Monarch butterflies flutter across the street to the narrator, who stands by the picket fence surrounding a purple house. The question, why would someone hurt others, applies to them all. So why? Unfortunately, there's no easy answer. There's no single reason that explains why some people behave violently when others do not, or why violence is more common in some communities than in others. It's about how individuals relate to those around them and their broader environment. CDC uses a four-level social ecological model to better understand the factors that influence violence. The purple house behind her spins on its base, revealing a cutaway of a living room with patterned wallpaper and a flat screen TV. The screen clicks on and James Mercy, PhD, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention appears. All of us live in what people call an ecology. There's us as individuals, and surrounding us is our family and friends at one level. We live in communities, and that surrounds us at another level. And then at another level, the whole society surrounds us. The TV screen goes dark. Outside, the narrator points to connected note cards displaying the social ecological model. Boxes surround the words, individual, relationship, community, and society, with arrows pointing between them. The social ecological model is not new. It has been used since the late 1970s to explain many public health issues, including violence. The model allows us to explore the dynamic relationships between people and their environment. The four-level model includes the individual level, the relationship level, the community level, and the societal level. In violence prevention, the social ecological model has two purposes. First, it helps us understand the factors that put people at risk for violence, as well as the ones that protect them from violence. These risk and protective factors are identified at each level of the model. This information helps program planners better focus their prevention efforts. The TV turns on again to reveal Thomas R. Simon, PhD, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The social ecological model really serves as a reminder that we need to look at individual level risks, um, including things like impulse control, personality factors, um, individual level motivations, but we need to look beyond individual level risk and protective factors to those factors that are operating within families, um, within peer groups, um, within schools and, um, and uh, other um, social structures within communities, as well as larger social factors like the media, um, like policies that are in place within, within cities and within communities. A close-up shows the narrator smiling beside the picket fence. The second purpose of the social ecological model provides us with a framework for prevention. In order to prevent violence, we need to be sure that prevention efforts are taking place across multiple levels of the model. A man with glasses appears on the TV screen. A note card introduces Jerry Reed, PhD, Suicide Prevention Resource Center. It's changing the way we look at the world. If you look at it one individual at a time, you're gonna be able to help one individual, one, one, one person at a time. If you take a population view, you might be surprised at some of the benefits that we could accrue. Let's take a closer look at each level of the social ecological model and how factors at each level can influence violence. The individual level of the social ecological model focuses on personal experiences, histories, and characteristics that make up who we are as, you got it, individuals. At this level, we consider things such as age, education, employment, attitudes and beliefs about violence, how people manage their emotions, whether they abuse drugs or alcohol, or whether they have witnessed violence in their homes and neighborhoods as potential factors that can influence violent behavior. The relationship level focuses on how our personal interactions with peers, friends, intimate partners or dating partners and other caring adults, along with our family environments, influence violent behavior. At this level, we look at family communication and conflict, relationship instabilities, parenting practices, and associations with delinquent peers as potential factors that can influence violent behavior. 
The purple house rotates, showing its front door and hedges instead of the living room. Butterflies flit across the road behind the narrator as she strolls onto the pavement. The community level explores the places where common social interactions occur, such as in schools, workplaces, and neighborhoods. Here we examine how the characteristics of these settings increase the risk for or protect people from violence. Community level characteristics can include poverty, unemployment, the amount of violence taking place in neighborhoods, the availability of safe and affordable places to live, learn, work, and play, and neighborhood support and cohesion. In schools and workplaces, it includes attention to safety and security, as well as policies and procedures to protect people from violence. The societal level refers to the broad societal factors that help create a climate in which violence is encouraged or discouraged. Larger societal factors also include the health, economic, educational, and social policies that help to maintain or lessen economic and social inequality between groups in society. The TV sitting by the moving boxes clicks on and plays an interview with James Mercy, PhD, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The societal level affects all the other levels of the social ecological model. So if we can change, this is really powerful, if we can change, values and norms we hold with regard to violence at a societal level, it will permeate all these other relationships. The screen goes dark. The narrator folds her hands. Now, let's review some basic information about the social ecological model, which serves as the foundation for our violence prevention training. A dangling note card reads, please click the continue button below to proceed. A yellow arrow points to the bottom right corner of the screen. 